Joining me virtually here in Lagos to discuss the Kenyan election is a professor of international relations and strategic studies, David Awurawa. Thank you so much for joining us on World Now. Ruto, a contender in this election, a key contender in this election, heads the Kenya Kwanzaa, which means Kenya First Alliance, now has the majority in the gubernatorial seat. What does this mean for the overall performance of the, uh, the party in this keenly contested election? Uh, thank you very much. Um, what it means is that uh, the message that uh, Ruto has been sending out has resonated with Kenyans. Uh, Ruto has presented himself as uh, representing the Kenyan dream, oh. where a son of nobody can become somebody. Um, you recall that uh, oh. Kenya has uh, literally been recovered by dynasties, if you like, um, the Odinga, the Odingas of this world, and the Kenyatas of this world. Uh, so um, Ruto deviated from that and uh, presented his uh, you know, message very clear, a message that uh, you know, um, Kenyans should uh, seize their country, take their country back. Uh, Kenyans should, uh, you know, focus on what would uh, benefit them. Kenyans should deviate from, you know, the dynast dynastic rule, which has not, uh, uh, you know, been favorable to them. So the fact that uh, Ruto has done as well as he has, um, people are hoping that he will be declared the winner in the next couple of hours, uh, shows that uh, the message he has put out has resonated with Kenyans, that uh, the son of nobody is becoming somebody, we make Kenyans, I mean, we we'll focus on the interests of Kenyans and they will bring genuine development to the country. Yeah. Well, Tuesday's vote passed off largely peaceful, but after previous elections packed deadly violence and rigging claims. So the Electoral Commission is under intense pressure to deliver a clean poll and release results. So how volatile could the situation be after the final declaration? Um, the um, Independent uh, Electoral and Boundary Commission will just have to declare the result today. In fact, the law does not permit them any further time, you know, so they just have to declare the result today. They have tried to be uh, straightforward. They have tried to be, you know, uh, forthright. Um, they have tried to be honest in their telling of the results uh, such that uh, it's not only the uh, commission officials, but party official, officials are able to tally the results. They have leveraged on technology. You know, they transmit results from the center, not just the results, but even the, the, the details of each voter. That is why it has taken so long to, you know, tally, because what people are doing, not just to try to, you know, get to know the figures for each, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, polling booth, unit, County and the rest of them, but also they have also tried to uh, do something like forensic uh, audit of the voters by checking out the, um, you know, the, the details of each voter. So uh, the commission just has to release the result today mm -hmm. to you know calm nerves and uh, they've got there's only tension in the country. Yeah, businesses are head up, uh, schools are shut. And uh, I don't think that uh, the country can wait any, any further. But the law doesn't permit the commission to be able to continue, you know, to delay any further. Absolutely. So they should tidy up uh, the 30 or so, uh, uh, you know, units left to, to, to make the 291 and then declare the results. Absolutely. And it the, the seems result... that uh, Ruto will win uh, from the figures uh, released so far. Well, until the um, independent, ele independent Electoral Commission actually declare the winner, because... We, we expect that they declare, you know, any moment now, because th four o'clock their time is supposed to be our own time here. I mean, that should be currently their own time. So poor Kenyans already reeling from COVID-19 have been hit by global, cri uh, global rises in food and fuel prices. And the worst drought for 40 years has devastated, uh, you know, the country's north. While its debt levels have also soared, how would this reality inform the government of the next administration? 
Yes, the the um, the next government uh, would um, is confronted will be confronted with challenges, enormous challenges. Um, just as you have said, uh, the COVID nineteen and the war in uh, Russia and Ukraine war has affected the global economy. Uh, Kenya has been affected as well. Inflation has uh, risen, you know, astronomically. Uh, the economy is not uh, has not done as well as you know uh, people thought it would. Of course. Uh, that is very easy to explain. And uh, poverty is expanding. Corruption has always been, been there in Kenya. And so, um, you know, the, 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 the government that, is called, that will come in, that will come and replace uh, yeah. uh, Kenyatta, whoever wins, uh, you know, uh, among the, the contenders, uh, has a whole lot of challenge to, uh, you know, to, to, to face and contend with. But uh, it depends on how determined the person is. Of course, let me also add that uh, the person also will need reconciliation. Because when you look at the election figures, the, the, the difference is just about 250,000 or thereabouts uh, between the leading candidate and like, Ruto for now, and then uh, Rila Odinga. What that means is that the country is almost split into two equal halves. And so whoever wins will also need to reconcile you know, the other side so that they can work together for the development of the country. But once there is determination and commitment, um, you know, one is confident that uh, Kenya will be able to overcome its challenges and uh, experience genuine development in the post-election period. We'll see how Kenya actually, or Kenyans actually speak at the end of the day. Uh, Professor of International Relations and Strategic Studies, mm -hmm. David Awarawo. Thank you so much for our insight. Thank you for having me.